In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth and was baptized by John. Just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit descending on him. And God's voice said, You are my Son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. And those of you who have been keeping score at home may be asking yourselves, Wait, again? Didn't we just read this like a few weeks ago? And the answer is yes. Last week, God announced something similar when Jesus was transfigured on the mountaintop before Peter, James, and John. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And then six weeks or so ago, on the Sunday after Epiphany, also known as the Baptism of the Lord, we read this same passage. And yes, now we are reading it yet again. The part that is new for this week, for the first Sunday in Lent, is actually the part that comes next. The Holy Spirit has descended onto Jesus, and then while he is yet still wet from his baptism, that Spirit compels him immediately to go into the desert, where for 40 days and 40 nights he is tempted by the devil. Of course, the season of Lent, which lasts 40 days if you don't include Sundays, has long been associated with this event in Christ's ministry. And I guess since Mark's account of Christ's temptation is, is really just two verses the powers that be who developed the lectionary decided it was too short to stand on its own, so they included this story of Christ's baptism once again that precedes it, even though we just read it. So even though it would make sense for me to talk with you this week about Christ's temptation, about how the words in Greek that get translated as Jesus being tempted by Satan are probably better understood as, as being tested or, or perhaps attacked, as wrestling with or, or contending with, or perhaps about how, how it also says that, that he was with the wild beasts, which is this little detail that nobody ever seems to talk about, but leads to all sorts of questions. Were the beasts on his side? Were they on the devil's side? Was Jesus out there wrestling snakes and mountain lions? Or this week, perhaps I should be talking about the concept of Satan in general. Was Jesus in the desert with this little dude with red horns and a pitchfork? Or is it just some sort of theological construct of evil and injustice personified. Yes, even though it would make sense this week to talk about any number of those things, I still can't let that first part go. Before all of this happens, Jesus is baptized by John in the Jordan River. The Spirit descends not really on him, but into him. God's Holy Spirit comes down from heaven and enters Jesus, and Jesus hears God's voice saying, You are my son. You are my child. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Again and again, we have heard it. And again and again, we need to hear it. For Lent this year, leading worship, I'm using this resource called a sanctified art which is a team of artists and ministers who produce written, visual, and uh, audio resources for church worship. This uh, team, this, this LLC, includes Reverend Sarah R., who is a colleague of my wife Kathy at Preston Hollow, where she serves as associate pastor for youth and young adults. 
And so this week and all the weeks of Lent, the bulletin art as well as the, the beautiful call to worship and call to confession and prayer of confession and prayer for illumination that Tony read for us were written by uh, a sanctified art. Um, and the theme, as you may have guessed, that they've used for these Lenten materials is again and again. About that theme, they write, in Lent, we are reminded that again and again, suffering and brokenness find us. We doubt again. We lament again. We mess up again. And again and again, the story of Jesus on the cross repeats. Every time lives are taken unjustly, every time the powerful choose corruption and violence, every time individuals forget how to love, with exacerbation, we exclaim again, again, how long, O oh God? And yet in the midst of the motion blur chaos of our lives, God offers a sacred refrain. I choose you. I love you. I will lead you to repair again and again. I had decided to use this theme and resource about three weeks ago, so well before the storms of last week. But of course, after this past week, the theme began to resonate even more as the scope and scale of the damage and, and trauma caused by the once-in-a-lifetime storm began to, to set in, I just said out loud, again? How many times must we go through this? There was nobody in the church office this week. That, that's why you notice things like the scripture text in the bulletin didn't line up with what was written. That's why we still have the banners from last week, the white transfiguration banners still up. They, they didn't get changed. But then again, maybe it's appropriate since we had to audible last week and be worshiping at home. We were supposed to be outdoors last week, if you'll remember, and then indoors and then from home. Um, and I should just say that today when it's about 49 degrees and overcast, this is what I thought it would be like worshiping outdoors. So I was just one, I was just one week off. Um, but then as I said during the announcements, you know, on top of that, a pipe burst in the church this week. Um, it is affecting mainly the, the toddler classroom over there. And our preschool director, Chris Connolly, has basically been working across, uh, just around the clock trying to get everything ready for tomorrow. Um, and when I came in yesterday to try to catch up on the week that was sort of lost um, in the work week. She was there and, and we were chatting about how we were going to get through this. And, and she talked to, she spoke about something that she had learned from one of her uh, preschool director colleagues in the area that happened from the tornadoes. And it took me a second, and I said, oh yeah, the tornadoes, like a year, that was like 14 crises ago, Chris. <laughs> again and again. I mean, we've already been dealing with a once-in-a-century pandemic. We've already been embattled in a new generation's civil rights movement. We've already been shocked by political violence and, and Christian nationalism. All of those crises have been very much ongoing, very much on the front burner. And now on top of that, we have this statewide disaster that if you have the savings to pay for a hotel, 
or maybe multiple residences or a strong social network, you can get through. But for the least of these, for those for whom the message of the kingdom of God is truly good news, this is yet another crisis that can totally derail life. This is a huge event with real danger and suffering. The blows just keep coming. And I think for us, it is so easy to want to withdraw for the season of Lent. I saw somebody on Facebook who was a a pastor in Texas who was saying, well, I'm giving up Lent for Lent this year because we've already been giving up power. We've already been giving up water. We've already been giving up gathering without face masks and singing. We can't give anything else up. It's so tempting to just want to withdraw into our cocoon. It's so tempting to just want to numb ourselves. And that's actually what uh, our family did um, last night. We missed Mardi Gras. We, we, we missed having king cake because the bakery where we get our king cake, you know, my wife Kathy is from New Orleans, was closed because of the storm. But they still had all those cakes. And so we got one um, yesterday and we had a New Orleans Mardi Gras celebration last night, um, dancing uh, in the dining room, uh, eating um, a, a sea fish, a seafood platter and, and eating king cake um, because we just need to, to withdraw is what it seems like. But we're called to enter in. We are called to follow Christ to those broken places, to emerge out of what seems comfortable, of what we know, and be Christ's hands and feet. As Christ walks the road to the cross alongside so many who don't have a choice to withdraw. I think about the child that I read about in Fort Worth who died from the cold in a mobile home because they already lived in a mobile home and then they didn't have heat. But if we are going to engage, if we are going to use this opportunity to be energized by mission, it will be hard. We will need to know in the midst of messing up that we are God's beloved, that God's grace, that God's love goes before and after and inside and outside of all that we do. It may seem like a trite message. It may seem like something that we already know. But the reason that we come to worship is that we can't hear it enough. To close today, I want to read some words from Sarah R., who, uh, as I mentioned, is part of the team that put together this theme for Lent, who serves at Preston Hollow. Her uh, father, um, Tom R., is also a Presbyterian pastor in Kansas City. So in addition, like me, in addition to being a preacher or a pastor, she's also a preacher's kid. So as they were coming up with this theme, she wrote these thoughts. I grew up in a family where church was not an option. We were there every single week, rain or shine. Therefore, as you might have guessed, it was not long into adolescence when I asked my parents the question, why do we have to go to church every 
single week. Cue the dramatic eye roll. My dad, with love, simply responded, because we are a forgetful people. For my parents, it was not enough that my brother and I heard that we were loved and were called to be loved every once in a while. They needed us to hear that truth every single week, again and again, day in and day out, lest we forget. Fast forward several years, and that is now how I feel about Lent. I believe that we need the stories of Lent and the hope of Holy Week every single year because there is something about ashes on our foreheads, about meals around tables, about the darkness of the tomb and the unstoppable hope of Easter that changes us. So once again, we walk this path together. And once again, God will meet us along the way. And once again, I am confident that we will be changed again and again. This world has known suffering. And so again and again, we will proclaim hope. Friends, again, know that you are God's child. You are beloved. With you, God is well pleased. Amen.